What's up ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this POV review by Autotop NL. I have to be very careful with those last two letters because apparently YouTube's automated subtitles has a very dirty mind. So weird stuff has been happening. Um, today I'm going to show you around this Honda Civic Type R FK8 and um, if my voice is sounding a bit weird that is because I have a cold and yeah the voice is suffering a little bit makes me sound like I have a side hustle at doing like voiceovers of trailers in a world where no one reviews cars anymore one man one man risks everything and test drives a Honda Civic Type R okay so enough with that um, <laughs> That's weird. Okay, so today we've got this Honda Civic Type R and it has been tuned. This is Peter Scar and he is a viewer, which is always very cool to drive you guys' cars. Uh, if you have a cool car you want to submit, please send an email to the address somewhere on screen right now uh, with a couple of photos and info. This is a really cool car. So today I'm going to show you around it. Uh, we're going to talk a bit about all the stuff on the outside. We're going to talk about the modifications Peter has made. And then we'll take it for a drive towards the Autobahn for an Autobahn blast. So we've driven this Honda Civic Type R FK8 before. It was around three years ago, I think, and it was a championship white car. Now, as I said back then, the white car is really nice because you can see all the black stuff and all the carbon fiber stuff because the contrast is so big, but I like this red car better. I just think it suits it a little bit better. So we've got at the front a splitter for the Type R with this is that real carbon? I don't think so. Uh, but we do have a little splitter and then we have this hood scoop at the front as well to give the engine a little bit more air. Uh, fog lights, very aggressive front on the Type R. It looks really cool, I think. It looks so extreme and uh, hardcore. The wheels, well, this is a funny story because Peter actually won these wheels uh, with a competition in uh, the Netherlands. He is from Belgium, but he entered a competition in the Netherlands with a company called Full Car Tuning and he won these GR wheels and I really like them. They have this like bronze color and uh, they are 19 inch. Now as standard, this car comes on 20 inch. And Peter actually said that he prefers this because you have a little bit more tire this is a 35 height tire and a stock it comes with a 30 tire so that is really nice i guess it also makes it a little bit more comfortable and you just have a bit more tire to work with he also installed these tire stickers but i'm afraid i did lose a few i don't think that was gone before so i'm sorry about that peter and now we've got these brembo brakes for piston i believe and i remember that i said back then that honda says that it has the same stopping power as a honda nsx so yeah really good brakes then we've got some air vents here to let air out of the wheel well to reduce lift we've got a side skirt there some type r stickers and we've got peter's youtube channel and instagram go follow him on Instagram and he also makes videos with his car loudly car drivers so go check him out and at the rear Peter also installed these different rear lights which do give it a very nice look and um, I, I think it also has like an animation but I'm not sure how to turn that on yeah there they go Oh, I, yes, I did it. Okay, so you go to off and then off and then on. Okay, so that is cool. And um, yeah, they are nice and dark and have a cool look. Really like that. Of course, we've got the massive rear wing here. Uh, this car doesn't have the carbon fiber exterior package, which, which would give you this carbon fiber part here as well very aggressive diffuser and then we see another modification that peter has made so this is a remus exhaust and uh, the car also has a h and the car also has an h gear 
catless downpipe. So it's completely straight basically. Peter did this himself, which is pretty cool. He installed all the modifications himself. And it sounds really cool, it's very loud. Vortex generators here at the rear, uh, which is also pretty cool. The car, I mean, you have to kind of dig the look. It is very extreme and very dramatic. But as I said back then, as long as it's functional, I'm okay with it. As long as it serves a purpose, I think it has a right to be there. Which this car took the Nürburgring lap record back in the day for front wheel drive cars. It has been beaten since by the Renault Megane Trophy R, I think. Where the hell is that thing? Ah, there it is. So in here we've got the K20 C1 engine, two liter four cylinder turbocharged <coughs> engine with a PRL intake, uh, which you can see here. And it also has a PRL intercooler upgrade. So that is nice. It also has a remap. So stock, this car has 320 horsepower. Uh, if you're in Europe or Japan, in other markets, it had 310, same as the FK2 that came before. 320 horsepower for this one and 400 newton meters of torque stock this car with a remap and the changes here you can see the, the the intake and the intercooler and the exhaust 386 horsepower and 530 newton meters of torque so that is pretty healthy i would say the car weighs around 1390 kilos all right so let's check the interior and Immediately, I'll show you guys one of my favorite bits of the car, which is the seat. Now, <laughs> uh, we do have a co-driver today. His name is Martin, and uh, he's with me at all times, even when he's not with me. So, the seats. These seats are really, really good. They are so freaking supportive. And, uh, I mean... You know, literally supportive, not like in an emotionally supportive way, but uh, yeah, that might be a conversation for a different day. They are super supportive, high bolsters on the legs and the uh, back as well. Really, really nice, high shoulders. You can sit nice and low. Yeah, this is pretty much spot on for your driving position. It is really nice. And then we've got the gearbox right here, manual six speed. Nice, nice and high actually. So the, the gear lever is high and you have a just a driving position that is absolutely perfect. Then let's start it up. We've got a, uh, uh oh, ah, there it is. <laughs> I thought I lost it. All right. So this is the Remus exhaust control unit. There we are. Okay, so we have four settings. Blue, this is blue, right? Something like that. This is closed. Which is nice, you have a little bit of a metallic sound and you do hear the intake at the front. Click once, go to green is, I believe 20% open. A Little bit louder. And then if we go to orange or yellow, whatever that is, 70%. And then red is, completely open which is very loud and then we've got the R button right here or switch so you can go from comfort to uh, sport and R plus or plus R which is the most aggressive setting of course we have adaptive dampers we have a limited slip diff we have a single mass flywheel so it has some serious stuff to cope with this amount of power and the only thing I remember from my last review is that I wished it had a separate button for the suspension so that you could drive in plus R and then click a button for comfort suspension. But hey, maybe they will do that in the next Civic Type R, which is called the FL2. Oh my God, I hope you guys can see that. There are two hairs over there and they are freaking boxing. Oh my God, I think that's a bit too far away for you guys to see, but that was awesome. They were like, jumping and hitting each other oh man we should start a nature channel that would be so awesome okay enough with the nonsense are they still there no, i don't see them 
Okay. So, <laughs> as you can hear, exhaust is very loud. Now, let's try with the valves closed because I don't actually know what that's like. I haven't tried that. Okay, so go. let's go for comfort. Valves closed. Ah, that's very nice. Okay, so even though it has a D-get downpipe uh, with the valves closed, that's not bad. I can, I, you can hear a little bit of resonation in the back box, but that's not bad at all. For a D-get, good job. Okay, so let's go to red, crazy mode and R plus R. Yeah, that's super loud. As you can hear, we have auto blip downshift. Uh, okay, let's take the tunnel. No horses around. Oh, yeah. That's a very healthy sound. I mean, I'm really happy that Peter installed this valve thing because otherwise this would be pretty much undrivable. If you would have this open at all times, that would be very just tiring basically this is nice okay so the driving experience in this car is very very good it it feels like a grown-up hot hatch like a very serious like a very serious hot hatch We have a little bit of torque steer. Um, Honda installed something like a dual axis system on this car, which means that it's basically similar to the Revo knuckle system on the Ford Focus RS. It basically means that parts of the steering and the suspension have been separated, uh, giving you less aggressive torque steer, which I have to say for 386 horsepower on the front wheels, full throttle, third gear that was not third gear max third gear not bad and it is really nice and torquey and this gearbox oh so nice brake pedal feel is great There goes Mr. Martin. But that is very loud and you do get those bangs, uh, which I really like, especially when you get close to uh, the rev limiter or when you hit the rev limiter, or when you let off the throttle at high RPM. Yeah, it sounds quite old school sometimes and I really like that okie dokie here we go at the Autobahn now let's find out what this car is like it feels really punchy especially in second third and fourth gear I really like how it feels Whoa. is an aggressive car now I do have to say that at higher speeds I feel like the arrow starts 
acting up basically and that is a good thing because it means it works but it's a bad thing at the autobahn because at some point you just feel like it won't go any faster because it's being slowed down by the arrow so much and the car is actually supposed to do uh, 272 kilometers an hour stock oh that's a good sound 272 stock but when i was doing the autobahn pov earlier the hell when i was doing the autobahn pov earlier it kind of got stuck at 263 gps 275 speedo um it it really didn't go any faster than that and i really tried so that's kind of strange there we go actually see the speedo right now the digital one so you can see that up until there it's actually still pretty quick but the further you get obviously the harder it struggles and at some point it just won't go any faster oh that rev limiter is freaking addictive Okay, let's find out if we can get close. So you can actually see the bonnet start shaking a little bit. Suspension is really good, even at this speed. That was 270 speedo. I do have to say I I really like the way this car feels. The handling is so nice. The just the steering feel although it does get quite heavy in uh, plus R mode. Could have done with a little bit less, but the car handles really well. zero to 100 and I th now 100 to 200 not so much For, especially from zero to 100 it is hurt by the fact that you need third gear to hit 100 kilometers an hour so I did like 5.6 I think I'm not sure what the stock number was I forgot but uh, I don't think it's that much quicker than stock because you just have quite a bit of wheel spin we do have lovely Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires though. Oh, third gear is very, very strong. <laughs> oh. A little bit of tire squeal there. It, it sort of challenges you to drive faster. It's, it's really cool. There we go, fourth gear. Little bang on the upshift. And that is 
75. I could have kept going, but honestly, I already know that it won't go faster, so I'm just going to head out to the gas station and bring the car back to Peter. Man, what an awesome car you've got, Peter. Thank you so much for taking it to us. Really, really enjoyed driving it. It is freaking awesome. To you guys, hope you enjoyed it. You can subscribe by clicking the big button in the middle. You can also check out this video on the right or go check out this playlist on the left. See you at the next one, bye.